What's going on, Shrewd Gang? My name is Camden, and I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I'll be discussing Nano X, ticker symbol NNOX. Make sure you stick around to the end because I'll be doing a technical analysis of the chart. If you're interested in this type of info, make sure you join the Shrewd Gang by hitting that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos. All right, let's get right into it. So let's pull up the chart real quick for Nano X. You guys know me, I'm always running the ABCD patterns. Nice, it indicates nice trend reversals. You get five minutes to kind of give you a better image. So this is actually in the past three days, maybe four. I think this is the sixth. Yeah, we had a little, we had a huge fall. Okay, this was FDA clearance, and it shot the stock up from around forty dollars up to an outstanding seventy-two, which is almost a hundred percent gains. But as soon as it did that. It sank, 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 sank. It's got a huge gap to fill, and that's exactly what it did. From Monday, the first upside it saw was around the 6th of April, which was Tuesday. And it went from its $44 mark up to 46 As soon as it hit that 46 kind of had a downward trend down to this B point. So it went from a 46 to a $40 drop which is around $6 difference. And then it, go, it went back up with a nice little uptrend back to 43. Had another bear trend all the way down, hit the low point at $38.80. Now, of course, I'm going to have a bullish trend line because I'm going to have my predictions. Everybody always has their predictions when it comes to buying any stock. And I like to be fully transparent and make my predictions. You know, it's always cool to see if it works out or not. I think there's going to be a nice bullish trend. A lot of you People have, are very impatient with the way you buy and hold stocks. If that's your case, you can't hold a stock for more than five days, then this stock isn't for you, honestly. And Nano X probably doesn't even want you investing in their company if you're only going to hold it for five days because you're probably going to lose money. A lot of you don't realize that when you, when you buy a stock, hold it for five days and sell it at a lower price then you're making somebody out there money. Every time you buy a stock, it has to be met with a seller. Vice versa, every time you sell a stock, it has to be met with a buyer. The value of the stock fluctuates with the different prices that it's being bought and sold at. Not the amount of buys, not the amount of sells. It has to do with the price each stock is being sold and bought at. That's what truly indicates an uptrend or a downtrend in stock value. So now that we got that out of the way, I kind of want to go through some of this ABCD pattern that I did. It's a very nice ABCD pattern, by the way. Usually they look kind of wonkier than this, but this looks nice and clean. Always, I indicate it's going to make it up to the C point, but I put some support lines down here, support and resistance lines. This being a support line, kind of bounced right here. This is a fat George W. Bush. <laughs> if you watch Trey, you know, you know what I mean, but a, a George W. is a double bottom pretty much. Let me write it down for you. Went from there to there, up to there, up to there, and then past it. But it bounced. You can see where it bounced, right here. So to get a little bit deeper, this bottom line, the reason I think it's gonna bounce around here because went up to here, had a little red, went down, back up, went down, back up, went down. A little, nice little bounce right here. As you can see, it went up. Red candle make, means it went down. Shot right through it, but a little another bounce right there, and another bounce right here. Super sloppy. I hope y'all get the memo. But the point is, this is a valid support line, pretty much. If you want to go a little bit back here, you can see it's some nice bounces right there. One right here, one right here, one right here. It went up, went down, kind of broke right here. That support line became a resistance line now. So now we have resistance line, and then we have this as a resistance line. Now, the reason this is a resistance line is because there's a bounce right there, there's a bounce right there, there's a bounce right there, cut through right there, but three bounces is enough for it to indicate a decent support. I'm trying to make it as short term as possible for you guys, just because I know a lot of you don't hold your stocks for more than two weeks. It is what it is, you know? So my prediction is for it to maybe come up and test this resistance line a little bit. I think it will test this resistance line. It may go up, bounce back down a little bit. And then if it does break through this resistance line, I feel like a next point it may have trouble passing is this with these three bounces right here. But regardless, these are just all points to watch. What I'm trying to say is it's either going to ride this up, ride this up. It's not going to be that straight. Trust me. It's going to be like, wah, 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 wah. 
but it's either going to ride that up, come up to where then the C mark is. If it has trouble passing the C mark, then it could consolidate a little more before it gets anywhere near this area. But with good hopes of a bright future of Nano X, I have a strong feeling that it's not going to have really that much trouble breaking through that C point and then maybe making it up to that A point. Hopefully you guys kind of got the message of what I was trying to put through that chart. I know I got a little sloppy there, got a little carried away, but that stuff happens. So now that we got some of that out of the way, let's get into some of the analyst price targets. And I like this a lot. We got a high of 67. Let me bring it to my Weeble because this is a little bit hard to read. Let me bring it over for y'all real quick. All right, so price targets, price targets, price targets. Here they are. Nice. That's good. I mean, that's good. Nobody says it's underperforming. Nobody says to sell it based off three analysis, however. But this is a pretty new company, pretty new IPO, if you will. Well, August of 2020 is when it came out, the 21st of August. And since then, it's been up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. It's at $39 right now. When it started off as an IPO, it was at 20. So in the grand scheme of things, if you bought it as soon as it came out to now, you'd be up 19 bucks on it per share, which is not bad. It's not bad gains. But if you bought it at 20 and sold it up to 68, that is a $48 difference. So I guess me saying that kind of goes against what I was saying earlier with the whole trading and investing thing. Because if you did think that this was going to be a great company when it came out and you bought as soon as it became public as an IPO, and held, you'd be up $19. But if you played the market, you could have bought it at $20, $40 profit, waited a little bit, bought again down here, sold up there, another almost $20 profit. I, I want to give a message to y'all real quick, okay? I've been learning a lot over this past month of kind of dialing down into the whole stock market. You can make money off of any stock. It doesn't matter what stock it is. But when you go out and try to find different companies to put money into and you're not holding it for a long time, there is no money to be made. There could be in some scenarios, but in the grand scheme of things, there is no money to be made. If I sat here and dialed down on Nano X in specific, you want to learn your stocks thoroughly. You want to learn the ways they trade, learn the patterns that they play, and you can make a lot of money with just one stock. In all honesty, you, you don't need to spread out your portfolio like these huge hedge funds and ETFs are doing because they have so much buying power to play around with that they're able to do that. And they have so many people that have access to their portfolio and that trade on their portfolio for the company that these different people maybe dial in on one, a few stocks maybe, and they're making money with that stock while everybody else in that portfolio is making money on their stocks. You get the message though. However, let me show you my portfolio real quick. Okay. It's a very sad portfolio. It's all right. I just opened these positions not too long ago. But instead of putting all my money in these different positions, I could be kind of swinging, kind of day trading one stock, and I maybe could have made a lot more money when I started trading on Weeble than a few dollars. My cash isn't settled yet, but I'm up, okay, I'm up $40. I'm up $40 in total with $600 coming in. So if I, instead of putting all my money into these different stocks, if I just put all of my money into NEO, why spread your positions out like these when you love a company so much, like I love Neo. I put in $75 into it and I was like, okay, that's enough. I want to spend some of this other money on some other potentially good companies. But I could sit here and I could learn in and out the way Neo trades and how it works. So that's just a little quick example. And don't worry, when Monday comes around, I'm throwing money into this stock. And by this stock, I mean Nano X because I'm in love with this company and I haven't taken my own advice yet. I really haven't, but I am going to, and I'm going to try to play these stocks that I have now and not get any more positions because when you have a million positions like that, it's hard to keep track. It really is. And it's hard to get good gains because if one company is doing amazing, one of your other positions could be down 50% and that could completely even out your portfolio. So just some things you need to think about, but let's bring it back to Nano X. Based off three analyst ratings, two of them have rated it a buy and one of them have rated it a hold. That's a good rating for a company. Let's get into the price targets, which is outstanding because the low price target already, just by me looking at it, is $56. That is a lot higher than what its current price is at. So this could indicate being an oversold stock. And it is. Based off of this RSI chart, it's not quite oversold. It's about four ticks off, but it's getting there. 
And then on the MACD chart, you can see this huge jump right here when it went up to $76. And since then, it's been under the line. So this is just an example. If you were to get into right here based just off of the MACD and RSI chart and you bought in up here, that would have been a great time to get in. You could have gotten in around $30. I'd be up $9 right now in my case, but in y'all's case, you'd be up a good amount of money. Sold up around $50 mark, $57 mark. That's a good play, you know? That's a great play. If you had balls of steel, you could have held it until 75 but if I saw gains like that, I probably would have sold too. And that's why whenever you see huge pops like that, it always falls down almost immediately. Because when people see huge gains, they want to sell their positions. They love it. They want that money because once all those people sell off, it could fall right back down to when you bought it at. Sounds like free money to me. So low price is $56, average medium price is $61.50, and a high of $67. Now is a great time to get into it based off of the recommendation from those Wall Street suits. So today I kind of got a little deep into different financial statements and what different things that are in a financial statement pretty much from, from a company. So let's go to their EPS. EPS is looking good. Above expected earnings. Good luck on a company. Let's get a little bit deeper though. So after that, we got our EBIT. This is how profitable the company is after they subtract the expenses without the tax or interest. So doing good as well. Revenue flat out zero, which means they're probably still in a lot of debt. The net income. So yeah, they're still carrying some debt. I mean, it's above the expected debt, but they're carrying debt. Net income is the amount of revenue left after subtracting your gross income, so total income by total expenses. Pretty simple. Net income, amount of money left after subtracting all of your expenses, taxes, and costs by all the money you made. Get that out of the way. Cash flow, nothing. Financial ratio, nothing. Income statement, let's go to the chart though. Let's go to their operating income. So the operating income kind of just indicates the amount of profit that they get from their business's operations. So solely based off of like um, wages that are deducted, depreciation, cost of goods sold. So it's the amount of profit from a business's operation. It's kind of simple. Let's get to that balance sheet. Woo wee. That looks good. That looks juicy. So total assets for this, you got to look at that first. That's all the assets or items of value that the company owns. Could be cash, could be money owed. Uh, it could be your inventory, could be the equipment that you're getting, could be the tools, all of that crap. That all goes into your total assets. Total liabilities has to do with debts, short-term, long-term loans that you're paying back. All of that has to do with your liabilities. Total assets, total liabilities, that gives you the debt-to-asset ratio. And the debt-to-asset ratio is basically your total liabilities divided by the total assets. That gives you a percentage if you multiply it by 100. So generally speaking, any percentage under 40 is a reasonable or good percentage based off of Wall Street's ratings. And then any company that has over a 60%, Apple has like, I'm pretty sure 80% debt to asset ratio, but it's all right. It's Apple. They can carry all those liabilities with no problem. But for Nano X, it's a little bit different with their debt to asset ratio being 7.4%. That's amazing. They have a lot more assets than liabilities and that's great in a company. Okay. So specifically getting into their cash flow, we have Starting off, their operating activities, which is going to be this first one right here. In the grand scheme of things, this is fine that it's negative, especially since Nano X just started off. A company could be gaining a front load, and a front load is basically just getting a bunch of debt starting off. So you start off strong. Palantir did the same thing. If I, I know a lot of you know about Palantir, it's honestly the smarter thing to do when starting a company, but I wouldn't know because I don't have a company. So after the operating activities, let's get into investing activities. The investing activities for cash flow is basically relating to their investment activities. So their securities, their assets, their sales of securities and their sales of assets. Yeah, all that goes into their investing activities. Now with financing activities, it's kind of what you would think of with investing activities. However, it's not. Financing activities is cash flow relating to issuing and selling stock, bonds, Paying or gaining loans and paying and gaining debts, pretty much. All that goes into the financing side of the balance sheet. So now that that is out of the way, let's get in a little bit of the news. Honestly, I feel like I've been talking too much about some technicals. Institutional buyers, 13Fs, hedge funds. 
This is a sad position by Pacer Advisions. It's a pretty sad position. They only put 4,000 into it. However, they could be hedging in. Right now is kind of a risky time to get in because there's a lot of room under that it could potentially fall to. But with my prediction, I believe with strong support that it's going to bounce and it's not going to see anywhere near this forever. Hope so. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into some of those institutional buy-ins. So we got that Pacer Advisories with only 4,000 into it. We got Cabot Growth has almost 40,000 into it. I see JP Morgan down here with some buy-ins, 225 shares. Obviously, as you can tell, these companies are pretty hesitant to put in big positions. So on some of the other companies that I've done some authentic DD on, their positions have been a lot bigger than this. And that's okay. With a new company coming out just less than a year ago, it's okay to be skeptical when buying into it. Not a lot of news coming out for it too. However, the only news that is out, out about it is good news. And that's honestly what you should look for when starting companies come out. They're not going to have a bunch of news coming out for them as they just start out because they're in the development stages. And that's exactly what Nano X is in. So showing this crap right here, you could not pay me at all to get into this crap. I'd kick around, I'd punch around, I'd do whatever thing. I'd move as much as I possibly could in that little tiny space right there because that is too small of a hole for my body to be in. This CT scanner is what is in the U.S. right now, what's being used in the U.S. right now. Maybe not this one specifically, but that's how they look. That's how they operate. In other countries that do have medical imaging available, they are also using these, but not for long. Not for long with this Nano X. Seriously. This thing is amazing, and I'm going to show you a nice little, nice little quick video about it, a 30-second video. Yeah, getting under any x-ray machine or CT scan makes me deathly scared. But with this nice blue color... With this portable bed, it makes me second guess on whether if I want to do it or not, honestly. So the innovation is pretty nice in this. I mean, you just lay in the bed. They don't have to push you into anything that secludes your body. You just lay there and that thing goes back and forth. It just looks like it'd be a futuristic machine. We can't have those big bulky machines forever. I mean, seriously. And to get even a little bit deeper, around two thirds of the world does not have access to medical imaging. And that's exactly what the mission of Nano X is. I would show you like a 10 minute interview with their CEO. However, that's a little too long, but due to the time's sake of this video, I'm just going to kind of reiterate what the CEO said. He basically wants to go out to countries that doesn't have access to medical imaging. Countries that have it a lot worse than we do, giving them the access to medical imaging. And the reason why it's more feasible to them, it's simply because it's a lot more cheaper. It's a lot more efficient. Let's get a little bit into it. So it promises to make medical scanning available to people around the world at a significantly lower cost and with a much smaller footprint than current machines. And by current machines, I mean this hulky bulky thing. Rather than the daunting CT scans found in, I like how they use the word daunting because it's true, found in today's hospitals, the NanoX Arc is a portable bed intended to make the patient feel more at ease while scanning is carried out. To get a little bit deeper, they're doing a little bit different than a lot of the other CT scanners, a lot of the medical imagery devices. And with 3,000 of them already sent out on the US after their agreement with USA Rad, 3,000 is already a good, it's already a good bit to start off as a company. When they say they're cheaper than CT scanners, they're probably not cheap. It's, it's so expensive to the point where two thirds of the world doesn't even have access to it. They just now got an FDA clearance as of, I believe, yesterday. Now, approval is different than clearance. A clearance is 510K. I'm not too sure what approval is, but it is not 510K. Whenever you see this number, just know it's clearance, not approval. These, these type of companies, that's all they need to blow up. You got to look for things like this. And I'm going to put out another video either today or tomorrow explaining some different types of companies to be looking for with upcoming FDA approvals. And that's going to be a pretty big video. There's probably going to be some bangers in there that'll pop in these next couple months. And if you want to hop on the train early, it's always good. It's always good. So I touched base on Nano X and their trends and patterns in the chart. Got some of those price targets in there. Got some of those institutional buy-ins. Went over some of the news. Went over all of their financials. I mean, all in all, I feel like this company is going to exceed very well. And once again, these are just predictions. These are just my own DD. This is just me saying out loud what I look for before I buy into a company. So take it how you want it. This isn't financial advice at all. But with all of that being covered, I appreciate y'all giving the time to watch this.
If you can give me a subscribe, if you can give me a quick share, if you can give me a quick like, if you can give me a quick comment, that'd be appreciated. Please, please stay safe out there. You know, Rona's going around like crazy. I'm pretty sure some of my family members have it. We gotta stay efficient out here. Regardless of all that, y'all stay safe. Y'all make some good investments. Peace out. I'll talk to y'all soon.